那个大家啊，那个应该说是晚上好了啊，那个。Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you very much for being so patient with us till now. So, first of all, self-introduction. I'm Jack Chen from Intel System Software Department. Before our original name was ODC. Working for Acorn. So several questions. How many of you know Acron? Raise your hand, please. A lot. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Second question: How many work for industry sector? Industry. Uh, a few, only one. The third question: How many working for automotive? Or um, onboard vehicle. So I need to share with you a lot of information. Otherwise, lots of information would be lost, because these are relating to uh, the three questions. I will have 35 minutes, so I will deliver my uh, presentation within 30 minutes. This is the table of contents. First is Acron. What is Acron? 60% of the audience today know Acron. 40% do not know. So I will introduce this briefly. Second is industrial use case. Last year, in other places, North America, Japan, we talked a lot about onboard vehicle, so that was a focus last year, and this year we will focus on industrial example cases. But of course, we will continue to work on automotive, and industrial would be our expanded area this year. And the part three is about architecture. Part four, roadmap. Our roadmap of uh, uh, technology. The part five will have a link, including WeChat group. So I will provide uh, the a QR code, and you can scan to join us for further connections. Also, I have lots of uh, extra information for you to have deeper dive. The details of technology is depending on how much extra time we will have. So first of all, what is Acron? Restart. Sorry. Sorry, technical issue. What's April? It's a flexible open source library type provisor for IoT workload consolidation. Also, in 2018, Linux Foundation, we launched this project. Until now, it has been carried out for about one year. Before open source, our team uh, developed this for about one year. So from beginning till now, it's about two years lifetime. During development, we set lots of uh, targets. First of all, first uh, servers and, and technologies, we need to set this apart. Otherwise, we do not need to create the Acron. And several differences. First of all, small footprint uh, relating to size. The current um, code is about uh, 31,000 lines. If you have a look at uh, KPM, it's about millions or even tens of millions 
lines. So if this is for commercial enterprises, the scale would be um, far more than uh, 30,000. Second, we mainly focus on IoT, so lots of special needs, including what I mentioned before, footprint. The second is within IoT area. This is heterogeneous workloads consolidation, including real-time and non-real-time, functionality safe and non-safe. So two different types of business to be consolidated. The third is our license is BSD license, very flexible, and differently to the others. We also have the other key values, including system security. So we have a VT uh, to back the virtualization. So we can pack Acron. And to schedule this, also we can use Kubernetes for scheduling and orchestration, no problem. We have our internal codes and not uh, all open source now. So these are the positioning for our value. This is about our progress. Last year, we mainly focused on automotive. The main uh, scenarios are council uh, to be integrated with the infotainment. So standardized two uh, platform. One is council, another is a uh, onboard infotainment. Lots of the customers also use three screens or four screens, and we can also support this. So in May this year, we launched v1.0 version. We name this as Alcron 1.0. This is also a very large milestone on the basis our clients have uh, um, introduced this into the products. For confidentiality, I cannot uh, um, name our clients for you. But in the future, you will notice our uh, Alcron um, technologies in the vehicle. No more details to share with you. Also Android and the other OS, we can also provide support. I will focus on this topic today in terms of industrial side. Let's have a look at this scenario. For industrial, there are lots of uniqueness. Uh, let's discuss the scenarios first. Just now, only one of the audience today raised his hand and he's working for industrial side. And currently, the consolidated parts are a few. One is real-time applications, including PLC, CNC, robotics, and real-time applications like this. Another part, workload interaction. On the production line, we have a council uh, for the workers to operate. The machines can be controlled, for example, the numeric controlling, uh, the tooling can be controlled by this console. In the conventional scenarios, we have two independent systems for operation and manually to put this onto the same tooling. So if you participate in the industrial trade shows, you will find that this is a small council and have a black box to put it in the front. And also it will have the windows not flashy, not very appealing, just very simple uh, programs you can notice is XYZ coordinate and the program operation situation. On the back end, they would put the tooling. So this is very typical scenario. And lots of manufacturers work for the councils. They need to purchase the products from Japan, from Mitsubishi, or from the other overseas companies. The cost is very high.
very expensive. Looking into the future, can we consolidate these two parts together, which is real time applications and console? In industry side, we name this as the consolidation among the two. Currently, we don't have multiple solutions to choose. I know Siemens has their solution and another manufacturer. So in this area, they have very fierce competition. Who can win this market, their products can be improved a lot. Today, we will mainly focus on the consolidation and preparation. You can see here, normally within the chip, how to consolidate these scenarios. Normally, we do like this. The typical scenario is like this, as I mentioned before, the console and the Windows OS. Windows in the operation condition covers about um, 60 to 70 percent or even higher market share. In control, we use VIX works for high end. In China, we also have lots of uh, domestic clients. They use Linux based OS. To reduce R&D costs, because uh, VIX works, price is very high and license fee is very high. In addition, another also works very well and uh, very important, safety. IEC in the industrial is a very important certification. It's very difficult to be certified by IEC. You have to guarantee the safety level, at least in the in, um, production line, to avoid fires or downtimes or the loss of expensive components. So safety very important. In terms of automotive sector, ISO 26262 is a very important certification. So we will focus on these uh, two sectors today. This is the design of our architecture. And the things to consider normally we do it like this. First of all, the uh, Below resources would be segmented, would be uh, categorized into two types. We have Z5. Today we also have Z5, a uh, Z5 topic uh, presentation today. Before we use it for safety guarantee, it can be used to monitor the hardware condition to check the healthy condition. If anything happens, it can send alert in real time. So safety alert on the right. The partition. So this has two partitions. It at least supports one uh, tools and to some emulate uh, multiple PLCs or CNCs, whatever. HMI normally only has one, depending on CPU capability or the quantity of resources. For HMI, we will reduce the resources it consumes, so it will go through service. We also provide sharing services, and the backend will support this. What are the difficulties we will come across? First of all, mixed criticality. So it integrates in real time, non real time, and giving us lots of complex complexities because for real time, uh, this uh, needs to prevent for the interruptions. If you are executing uh, the events and uh, accessing cache, uh, Windows also visiting cache, accessing cache, L3 cache then the cache would be influenced. Maybe within the cache, um, there would be influence. And for next time, access or execution, this data or commands 
needs to have some changes and the real time will be influenced. So this is the interference. The biggest challenge for us to deal with. The second is safety. So we regard this as safety domain. So we have passed the certification for safety domain. We cooperate with most of uh, the um, certification agencies, but for the right part, um, very pricey, very difficult to pass certification. We have accumulated the experiences. Normally, a line of code, the certification cost is very high, 100 to 150 uh, US dollars. So it uh, is not possible to certify that, and uh, the system will be divided into two parts, uh, the safe and unsafe parts. And uh, here it might be interfered, the unsafe part may affect the safe part. How to address this issue is also important. And then about isolation and sharing, of course, we want to share the resources. Otherwise, why do we start workload consolidation? On the other hand, we want to have isolation because we don't want other OS to affect our tools. Otherwise, the components may uh, be problematic, so the best way to avoid this influence is isolation. You have your own storage and your own network, and this is the best way. But in our system, it should be implemented on the same level, and uh, of course, maybe some interference will be uh, generated. And we also have some other in uh, indicators. Like the run time, the run trip time, and uh, also the MSI interrupt latency, and also the xenon latency, which is always about to measure its scheduled latency, and uh, usually. For the task scheduling, the density would be around one uh, millisecond or ten millisecond. And uh, then the HMI is Windows 10. We have designed this architecture. On the left, it's a safety OS which is pre launched. It means all the it is called the pre-launch the safety OS and on the right it has a post-launched and the service VM in the middle means it starts before that and on the right it means it starts after and for the post launch the VM it is uh, referring to the service VM mod the Acron device model to start it so this is the basic concept and uh, for the four models how would we use them for the one on the left, the CF safety OS, it could should be restricted by the watch machine. If that stopped working, the safety OS on the left could still continue working. Give a warning, like the operators could then intervene. And on the right, the RTVM, real time VM, to run the real time OS, 
it is uh, to run the control codes cycle by cycle. And uh, then to operate the production devices in the factory. And uh, then about the devices we support, you can see many of them in the list, but some highlights I would like to point out. PSN will be used in the industrial scenario. EasterGet and the Profinet would be used more often, like for Siemens, Profan, in Japan they would use this. And uh, this would be based on the private protocols, and for TSM, is a standardized protocol, unlike the private ones. It is a public and unified standard in the industry. And its advantage is that it could help achieve connectivity between the products. And for the TSN, it is uh, to control the device. Like the TLC would through TSN to send the network package and then to drive the motor. So the network must be real time, and uh, the TSN is a time sensitive network. It's for time sensitive network. And, uh, with virtualization, you could uh, achieve the real-time effect. And then about FPGA, it might be needed for some mathematical processing in the industry. And usually for FPGA, we would have it cut through, through RTBM and uh, then directly access FPGA. And we also have some customers asking whether they could be shared so that they would support multiple simulated PS, PLC to visit the same FPGA. But now we do not have clear answer to that. If you want to virtualize uh, FPGA, it's not that difficult, but uh, if you want to make it real time, it is quite tricky. So we may need a further design on FPGA. And the next one is about GPU. For the onboard infotainment system, they need to share the same GPU, but in the industry HMI, um, it's not the case. So GPU is mainly for Windows. But it is not for mediated path through. For the GPU, the real backend is in our room service, device service. It is for G HMI and Windows. The main reason to use this is to avoid interference. If we just to directly use it for Windows, Windows is not that reliable. And some people may think Windows is a malicious, a malicious system. And it would lead to some problem. And if problems happen, it may cause collapse of the whole system. And the graphics driver under Windows, then the graphics may be collapsed, but the probability is quite low. But once it happens, it will lead to the failure of the whole system. And uh, we want to address this issue. And other devices, I will just skip them. Let's now look at 
the safety problem. In the industry, they need to meet the IEC uh, 61508 standard. And here we divide the system into two parts. On the left, the below part is a hypervisor. Here we consider about Zefa, and here we use a blue color to frame it. It is a city certified by Intel or customer, but Intel will not finish everything. Some details will be left to the customer because Intel is not offering end-to-end -end solutions. Customers need to cover part of the job. And they need to certify it by themselves as well. This is the left part, which we call the safety related part. And on the right, the, purple, the pink part is not uh, the non safety part. They may run the Linux system or our tools. And this is not about the uh, safety certification. And uh, we want to make sure the right part will not interfere the left one. We may need to try to avoid the right part, non-safety VM codes to prevent the non-safety codes to affect the safety ones. And I will not dwell on the details, because the other day we had a, a meetup event when more than 100 developers attended, and we also published our uh, tutorials at that event so that you could know more details. And then for Windows as HMI domain, in the industry, Windows is quite dominating. And maybe people will ask how about Linux? Linux is easy to operate, but the main thing is in the industry, for the ITers, um, if we want to track a problem that's easy, but uh, in the industry, it's not the case. Maybe they are not, they are not the ITers, they are like mechanics, and they don't know about programming. <laughs> so maybe those codes used to run on Windows 7 or even earlier um, editions and the compatibility may be not that ideal, but reliability here is quite critical. So we want to make sure that with the upgraded system, the codes could still run. The compatibility is quite important here. And uh, we want to make it here mandatory. And uh, if we want to make Windows, we need to, first of all, for starting, we need to adopt OVMF. We want to avoid change to Windows because it's closed source. We have the OVMF. With copy driver, and the logo could be normally demonstrated during starting. In addition, we also support secret putter, a secure boot. With TPM, and we will adopt a watch TPM, the virtue, virtue TPM to do it. So for the secure boot, it is um, like this. And for Microsoft, for virtualization, they've initiated their own framework, which is called Hyper-V. 
we will not support um, the whole set of Hyper-V, just a subset, which is called TLFS. The Hyper-V hypervisor top-level functional specification, we would support this one. And uh, another example would be, as I mentioned, Windows is a malicious OS. And uh, on our Intel hardware platform, we also have GT class, a GT class for the graphics. It could access to part of the cache, and it may interfere with the OS. And uh, VixWorks and RT Linux to realize real time with we'll the key technologies. First, we would uh, pass through the local key to the RTBM, and the interruption of the processing is just to interfere with the OS, and the hypervisor will not be intervened to reduce the latency. And uh, the second key technology is enable CAT. The main feature here is to divide the cache, and uh, on the RTM it will have a exclusively occupied cache and will not interfere with other OS. And in our files, we could uh, turn off some feature that will uh, influence the real-time performance so, so as to improve the real-time performance. But we need to have the customized BIOS, and we need to follow a guideline to customize it. And we need to offer these options so that um, before shipment, the option would also be closed to avoid further unnecessary influence. But how about its real-time performance? We have evaluated the real-time latency. We have the Intel Core CPU with 1.9 gigahertz and 8 uh, giga memory, and we also have the PrimRT for both, and we would benchmark both on their configuration, and this is the result we got. On the left, on the left you compare the upper and lower graph, and you can see how it is distributed. And uh, the more closer, the closer to the left, the better the jitter. And on the right, it is the overall jitter histogram. And uh, for the jailhouse, you can see it is uh, closer to the upper part. And uh, the uh, the low one, you can see it is about the Acron data. And in our 2019 results, we have some Intel policies to maintain them. And this is also derived from the Acron one. And uh, we also have our JTA paper published for your reference. This is our roadmap. You can see the both green and red parts are about our real-time requirements. And by the end of the year, we want to activate all the features. Uh, these are our major goals. And um, we're approaching the end. And uh, here you can scan the QR code to join our WeChat group. Uh, actually, this is my personal WeChat account. Because our group is big enough, you cannot join. And you can just scan the QR code at me on your WeChat, and I, I, I can uh, introduce you to the group. Any question? Interpreter can't hear anything. 
所有的费用加起来，都会研发成本，包括任何费用。It's all on expenses combined for development, for construction. I didn't quite get you on the safety issue. So, are there different levels for the safety? It's cell two now. For cell three, we need the more redundancy on the hardware. So it is not isolation physically. And uh, what is your fundamental method for the certification? Well, let's go back to this slide. If you go to see the IEC standards or ISO standards, it stipulates what conditions you need to meet. But here, for our certification, we will try our best to put safety OS on the left to run some hardware codes and we also have STL-TOM hardware to have regular examinations every 125 a a milliseconds. And if problems happen, it will give a warning. But how would you guarantee the time sequence and storage of the directives will not influence that? Well, this is a very good question. This is what we are making efforts on for the watch mas machine. Um, each and every directive and uh, also the temporal isolation all should be analyzed, all codes should be thoroughly analyzed to make sure there's no problem. For every three lines of uh, codes, it needs a safety requirement. I think there are so many scenarios. Yes, two-thirds of our uh, human resources are put on this. It is not 100 US dollar, it is between 150 and 200. Maybe you can have two pathways, and then you decide or decide which one to choose. This is our next step of action to realize cell three. And if we put the codes into this bootload, we would have the QA of the storage, or we need to make sure the hardware status should be tested to make sure it meets our expected condition. So the bottom layer, you at the BIOS, you've made a lot of settings, right? Thank you. Bye. Oh, you open up. 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 You open up.